Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. Today I'll be doing an Ernest Howard Shepard study of Alan Alexandra Milne's Winnie the Pooh character, as well as my original version of the silly old bear with his ten honey pots. The Shepard piece shows the very rainy day scene when Pooh has to evacuate his tree hollow home and remove himself and his ten precious honey pots to a branch above. I've drawn in the ink outlines with a waterproof Sig pigment ink marker before starting, and I'm using ink tense blocks to paint this study. Shepard's style was scrawly, loose, messy, simple, and inky, and resulted in very sweet, emotive characters and scenes despite the simplicity. Here you can really feel the rain hitting this cuddly bear, and really feel the humor and touching quality of his silly decision to save all of his honeypots. Shepard was also an illustrator for Punch Magazine, and like Tenniel's Alice or Mad Hatter or White Rabbit became the iconic images for those characters, Shepard's vision of Pooh and his friends made a lasting impression on what we feel they ought to look like. Certainly they influenced the Disney cartoon version of Pooh, which came much later. Shepard's imaginings of Kenneth Graham's Wind in the Willows characters are also very well known. Ironically, Shepard came to resent his work for the Pooh books as he wanted to be known for a wider body of work, but the silly old bear really eclipsed everything else. I've painted the scene very simply to suit the drawing style of Shepard that we are emulating in the study. The diagonal rainfall lines add a lot of tension and energy to the otherwise placid and horizontal scene. So, I've often been asked what sort of music I might listen to while I paint. If I'm not teaching or conversing while I paint, I actually don't listen to music. Sometimes I'll paint in silence, but I much prefer to have an entertaining audiobook on in the background. Here's a bit of what I listened to as I painted this piece. He splashed to his door and looked out. This is serious, said Pooh. I must have an escape. So he took his largest pot of honey and escaped with it to a broad branch of his tree well above the water. And then he climbed down again and escaped with another pot. And when the whole escape was finished, there was Pooh sitting on his branch, dangling his legs. And there, beside him, were ten pots of honey. Yep, that's my Winnie the Pooh audiobook, and I managed to listen to that whole book by the time I finished this painting of Pooh. It really helped the painting ambiance. And for all my subscribers, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a 30-day trial. So check out Winnie the Pooh or any other audiobook free for some literary inspiration while you embark on your epic art adventures. To try Audible and download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com forward slash watercolor and wizardry, which I've pasted in the description box below. And then we move on to my own imagining of Pooh and his honey pots. I'll do it using the same three ink tense colors, but without any ink outlines and in my own drawing style. I drew the part when he's still inside the house with the ten honey pots and hasn't decided to evacuate yet. But he's still worried about how much it's raining outside and he's still tucking into the honey, naturally. Pooh is not a real bear, the character is supposed to be a toy bear, so I based my rendition of Pooh off of a doll, of the vintage R. John Wright bear doll, and I imagined his pots had some embellishment the way toy miniatures or decorations do too, so again I've given it my own spin. I took a break from the bear to paint one of the pots, which I assume Pooh borrowed from Rabbit, and I'm doing different decorations and embellishments on the pots, and so on this one I'm just gonna do like a flower, and it'll eventually have berries and some cinnamon roll lollipops in it. I drew in some bees as well and tried to stage them so that their flight trails help the balance of the pots and the bear, and they're grouped in odd numbered groups for more interest. Three equidistant bees on the right, three more on the left in a cluster, and one on its own. The bees are done very simply, no heads, no legs, no abdomen, thorax division, fat and cute and simple. Ink tense blocks are waterproof colors, they don't behave like liquid ink, rather they handle more like a combination of watercolor and gouache, and thankfully there is no plastic handling like when using acrylic. I choose not to use use my sable brushes with inks, including Inktense for now, as ink can leave some permanent residue in the ferrule, but Inktense is different from conventional waterproof inks. If left to dry on a palette, it readily reconstitutes for future use with a wet brush, unlike liquid permanent inks like those from Dr. Phil Martin's. It's pretty magical and unique for Inktense to be permanent on paper or fabric, but reusable on a palette even after it dries. So I assume it should rinse out cleaner than Dr. Phil Martin's from a brush too, so I might use it in sable brushes in the future. I'll be working in transparent glazes. The ink tense blocks include transparent and also semi-opaque and opaque colors in the set so they can be used both ways. I can use the transparent blocks and lighten them with water for transparent glazes like in this piece, or I can use the opaque blocks and add the white block to lighten colors instead of water for opaque gouache-like painting in other pieces. You actually get some of the benefits of the permanency of acrylic or oil after it dries, but in a medium that works like watercolor or gouache, which is really fun and unique. They can be a bit duller than traditional artist-grade watercolor 
colors I've found, which are more luminous and bright than the ink tents, but nothing is perfect, I guess. Because it's permanent on the paper, ink tents is something to use more carefully than traditional watercolors, which can be lifted and corrected. Apart from making deliberate and thought out brush strokes, Working wet on wet and keeping a damp, clean brush in your other hand will help by giving a bit of ink blending and correcting time. Don't use dry brush with ink tents unless you are certain of your marks and making conventional inking outline strokes. I've tried watercolor crayons or water soluble oil pastels like the Creative Color Aqua Sticks and similar Creative Color Aqua Bricks or the Karen Dosh Neo Color 2s, and they can all also be used like watercolor or gouache if used thin or thick, but they have a waxy, oily binder, so they develop a slippery wax resist on the paper, which can be annoying in later layers. And the ink tents don't do this, which is really nice. But the watercolor crayons can be lifted and corrected and the ink tents cannot. That's a plus or a minus depending on what and how you're painting. One example of the pros of the waterproof nature of the ink tents is that I did the dark eyes and nose on Pooh first and painted the light yellow of his fur around it later without worrying that his face would bleed out and become muddy. If I was doing this in watercolor or gouache, I would have to worry about it lifting somewhat or bleeding. But if I made a mistake, I could also fix it by lifting it. Whereas with the ink tents, if I make a mistake, it's just there unless I can try to cover it up. I've also found that if you mix leftover watercolor or watercolor crayons with ink tents at a 50-50 or more ratio with ink tents colors, the mix will also become waterproof. So you can mix blends or layer with watercolor paints and media this way with ink tents. I'm doing the rendering with wet into wet sectional transparent glazes, giving me soft edges that I can shape and blend further. So I'm basically drawing with my paint and brush. I continued with much of the same glazing techniques to build up value and texture and color. Because violet is a complement to yellow, I mixed a purpley brown for shadow areas on the yellow fur for the bear. And the main challenge after that was to just identify different textures. The fuzzy short fur of the plush toy bear, the knit texture of his red sweater, and the shiny nature of the honey. Because both Pooh and the honey are similar in color, the only way for them to read clearly as separate from each other was the texture. One is matte and fuzzy, and the other is slick and shiny. So I painted the honey without any scumbly fuzz texture, all really smooth blends, and then added sharp white highlights using a gel pen. And I could have used gouache or the white ink tense block for the highlights too. Then I took that white and I smoothed and spread it out using a tiny wet spotter brush. The raining of the painting is easier, there's just the other pots left, and they're going to be done just like the first pot. I did them off camera one at a time whenever I got the chance, because this was a piece that took longer than some of my easier pieces. Eventually, I got my cute, worried, silly, chubby bear all done. This piece was for my dad for Father's Day, because he loves cute cute fat bears. As always, thanks for parking your brushes here. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out my website links below. If you're interested in buying my originals or prints, please email me or visit my website for information. Until next time, wishing you all fantastical art adventures.